everybody and welcome back to Connor here. Hope you're doing really well. All Leeds TV, New Year's Eve. I hope you're going to have an absolutely fantastic night and a cracking new year. Uh, 2020 is upon us. 21 games left for Leeds United and all to play for as they say. Listen, we've had a tremendous year here on All Leeds TV. We've grown exponentially. Um, we're doing really well now. and It's all down to uh, your support. So crack a like on the video for yourself. Thank you so much for your continued support throughout the year. And we have your West Bromwich Albion preview out right now. So let me collect my notes. So here we go. Um, listen, I've done a little bit of analysis on West Brom's previous game against Middlesbrough. Um, the reason behind that is because I like to watch the game afterwards just so I can see for myself where I think you can sort of break down where West Brom may have problems with this Leeds United side. Now, Middlesbrough, um, the past four games, I think they've won four on the bounce uh, now, but they were creating vast amount of space against this West Bromwich Albion team. Obviously, West Brom, they've got, you know, sort of a, a experienced vets at the back in Hagazi. Um, a Jay, a little bit younger, obviously, but um, obviously they've got Bartley in and around that back line as well. He wasn't playing the other day. But 10 shots on target from 15 shots from Middlesbrough away at the league leaders at the time. Now, that is a massive statistic, a huge statistics, and I wa a statistic, and I watched it back, and at every opportunity, uh, Middlesbrough were making uh, Johnston work every single time. Now, I think Sam Johnston's a wonderful goalkeeper, and arguably say he's the best in the division um, alongside you-know-who. Um, but Johnston had to be at, at his peak. He was he was brilliant during that game, um, and he had to be because Borough were really they put really putting it on them. But it wasn't anything completely different to any any other side in the Championship. When West Brom played Barnsley as well earlier on, Barnsley absolutely battered them. They battered them um, in that game. I've got a few Barnsley friends myself. My best mate's a Barnsley fan, as a lot of you long term viewers probably know. He's done a couple of previews on this channel as well. But, you know, he was telling me, he turned round and he said, you couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe we didn't score three or four. Uh, Barnsley on a little bit of a resurgence at this moment in time. So keep an eye out for them as well. Coming up quite nicely. Got about four good results on the bounce, Barnsley. So maybe if they're on your coupon to go down, you need to rectify that. But basically what I'm saying is teams are going at West Brom now. There's no, there's not really a fear factor. They, they are beatable. They are beatable. And we've seen that in the past five games. <clears throat> but they left a lot of space in that game and... It took West Brom 26 minutes to register their first shot. And it took them 60 minutes to have their first shot on target. So, I mean, that bodes so well for Leeds United. Obviously, we've got to keep our defensive resoluteness. We've got to keep our structure. But that bodes so well. They're not clearing teams off the park. They are struggling when teams are putting it on them with the high press. They're creating space. And West Brom is struggling to deal with it. Um, but as I've just mentioned with the high press... Every time West Bromwich Albion's midfielder, you know, midfielders had it, you know, Barry, Livermore, obviously they're a little bit older, well, they're very much older in, in football in terms. That high press was causing them problems every single time. Every single time, Burr reverted to a 4 2 3 1 formation, and every time you had the likes of Savile putting Barry, putting Livermore under pressure, and that's where the mistakes were made. That is where the mistakes have been made against this Leeds United side. You look at Preston, they were putting that high press on us throughout the game. A lot of people were turning around and saying they won't be able to sustain it. They did sustain it because it kept working and they didn't have to run that much. They didn't have to they didn't have to fatigue themselves that much because Leeds' passing wasn't crisp. It wasn't effective. It wasn't efficient. So they were able to intercept and they were able to hit us on the counter-attack, which they did for their goal. It's exactly what Cardiff did in the second half. It's exactly what Birmingham were doing yesterday, uh, the other day as well. So we need to be aware of that. We need to be aware that our passing has to be crisp because they will intercept intercept it West Brom and we know what they're like on the counter-attack if there's a team that is even better than us on the counter-attack you could argue it is West Bromwich Albion they're very very good on the counter-attack but we'll get to that in a minute but that is the tactic of how we can combat that we can combat them with the, uh, the high press and they're going to try to do it to us because they've seen in the past four games that that has worked so Leeds need to be good on the ball we need to be very good no sloppiness, and that midfield needs to drastically improve from what we've seen in these past four games. So how do I think West Bromwich Albion are going to start? Well, I think they're going to start in their normal 4-2-3-1 formation. I think you're going to see Sam Johnston in net. 
I would argue, and a lot of you don't agree, but I would say he's the best goalkeeper in the championship. And the only reason I wouldn't say that is to appease you lot, but I'm going to be honest. And I think Johnston is the best. I think he's a brilliant goalkeeper. They're going to go furlong at right back for me. A J in Hagazi. Now they were favoured in the they were favoured in the last game, but I do wonder if Bartley is going to make an appearance. Obviously, two goals conceded, a goal from a set piece as well. Bilic will not like that, so you do wonder if Bartley is going to come in, maybe for Hagazi to face his former club Leeds United. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Townsend as well at the back. Um, Left back for uh, West Bromwich Albion. We're going to go with Livermore and Barry just protecting the back four. Then we've got the, the, uh, an absolutely insane front four with Phillips, Pereira, Edwards. And I think, I'm going to go with this, I think Billich will start Charlie Austin against Leeds United. I think he's going to see, in his opinion, some defensive lapses, some defensive um, frailties. And I think he will start... Um, I think he'll start Charlie Austin against Leeds United. I think it's going to be a different game where you know he might be thinking Austin's going to have to feed off scraps. So, but I think he's a more effective finisher than Hal Robson Carnu. So that's how I think it's going to start. If you look at their past results, you know we've just we've just spoken about that at the start of the uh, video. Battered Swansea, absolutely battered Swansea. I think that was the game where Pereira got something like four assists and a goal. We'll get onto him in a, in a minute. And I believe that was the game that Dean Garner was fit. Now after that. We've got, we've got not in any chronological order, but the next four games they've had, drawn with Wigan away, drawn with Brentford at home, drawn with Barnsley and lost to Borough. Now, drawn with Barnsley, as I've said earlier on, I don't think it's, it's, it's a problem at this minute in time. Barnsley are picking up some serious form under Struber and I think Barnsley are going to surprise a fair few in the second half of the season. Brentford at home, it's not a bad result. We all know that. That game at Ellen Road was was to and fro. It could have gone either way. Brentford are a very good side, obviously. Aside from that 1-0 loss against Millwall the other day, they've been an absolute resurgence um, under Thomas Frank. Wigan was a poor result. I watched the Wigan game and they were back. The Wigan were very unlucky. Very unlucky not to get the win. But if you do look at that and you look at West Bromwich Albion and how they want to be the champions of this division and get promoted to the Premier League, you've got Wigan, Brentford, Barnsley and Middlesbrough. Four teams there who they should be beating. They should be beating. And out of those four games, they've got three points, which is not good enough. It is not good enough for a West Bromwich Albion side. They are winless in three coming up against this Leeds United side. Are they the same without Dean Garner? I've looked on Twitter this morning. A lot of West, a lot of West Bromwich Albion fans are saying that without Dean Garner, this side doesn't click as well. You know, Edwards has come in for him. He got taken off the other day. And is that one of those things that could be a potential weakness in West Bromwich Albion's armoury? Um, Obviously, their uh, conference this morning, they had a press conference this morning with Bilic, who said Dean Garner's out. They were hoping that he was going to be back, but it looks like it's going to be two to three more weeks before Dean Garner is back. Um, Ferguson as well, Nathan Ferguson, the left back, is also out. So, West Bromwich Albion, like Leeds United, do have some injury woes today. Um, so, But positively for them, apparently Kieran Gibbs is coming back, which I do think is a massive boost for Albion, because I do rate Kieran Gibbs at this level. Um, now, if you look at the statistics of this team, they score goals. They score goals. Charlie Austin, we all know he's absolutely in form at this moment in time. He's had 19 games, 8 goals. Hal robson Carnu, 19 games, 7 goals. Matty Phillips, who everyone's sleeping on. I don't think a lot of people are thinking about Matty Phillips. Bearing in mind, last time we went to the Hawthorns, Phillips got man of the match and was by far the best player on the pitch. 22 games, 7 goals. And the main man, the main man who leads, need to focus on. And uh, This is why Calvin Phillips needs to have one of the best games he's ever had in a Leeds United shirt. Because I would arguably say he's coming up against one of the best uh, centre attacking midfielders we have we have ever seen at this level on loan from Sport in Lisbon Brazilian 23 years old Matias Pereira absolute baller a wonderful wonderful player and if we can keep him quiet if we can shut him down which Barnsley have done which Brentford have done um, which Borough have done we can win this game. We can beat this West Bromwich Albion side. But the key to shutting down West Bromwich Albion's supply is shutting this man down. He's a fantastic player. Um, we saw Ruben Neves a couple of years ago applying his trade in the Championship. This kid is at that level. He's a wonderful player and I think he is the coup of the window. I'm stunned he's playing at this level. Watched him against Swans in that 5-1 victory and you can just tell he's levels above this division. Um, so, yeah. So where's the key for Leeds United? Well, for me, 
it's all going to be about counter-attacks. I think we're going to have to soak up pressure. I really think we're going to have to soak up pressure. But it's going to be how often can Leeds get the ball in the, you know, how, how often can Kiko Kassia get the ball, throw it out and Leeds can get on the counter-attack and damage West Brom. The other day, we did damage Birmingham a hell of a lot on the counter-attack. We were shocking at the back, which is where I think we're, for some reason, weak all of a sudden. But on the counter-attack, we are ruthless. Um, and that, for me, is how we're going to win the game. I think we have to soak up pressure because I think on the ball, I think possessionally, West Bromwich Albion are as good as Leeds. I think technically they've got excellent players who can keep hold of the ball, they can retain possession whilst deploying that high press. But I think if Leeds are able to control the game and hit them on counter-attacks, that is where we win. We, we don't need to be consistently bashing them on the counter -attack, on, on the attack, sorry, because we're going to be susceptible at the back. We need to choose, we need to pick our moments when to hit them on the counter-attack because that is where they're going to be susceptible. I think the key battle in this, ge this game is going to be Helder Costa versus a, a returning Kieran Gibbs. He was going to be, a, he's, a, he's a good player at this level, but I do think a fire in Helder Costa who goes in consistently, who has added goals to his game, is where we're going to win this game. I think exploiting that right hand side is going to be a key facet in Leeds winning this game. But the big, the big news for me is KP and Clip. You know they need to step up big time for me. Last four games they ain't been good enough, especially in that Birmingham game where I saw a lack of effort from Clip, a lack of endeavour from Clip, and Phillips. He just wasn't able to get his rhythm, and I've seen that the past four games. You know. He needs to step it up big time because he's going to have the absolute challenge of his life facing Matias Pereira. And guess what, guys? Pereira goes off. They've got Romain Sawyers coming on. Do you know what I mean? That is the quality at their disposal. That's the quality at Bilic's disposal. That's why they invested the money when Bilic came in. And that's why they've backed him. It is to get depth, strength in depth, something you could argue Leeds United do not have uh, with the likes of Jordan Stevens and Robbie Gotts on the bench. Um, but... How I would start anyway, I would go Kiko Kassir in net. I would go with a 4 1 4 1 formation. I would go Kiko Kassir in net, Luke Kaling at the back, Cooper, White, centre half partnerships. They need to drastically improve. I would go as far as saying White's not had a good 10 days either. I think he's looked sloppy, but I also think Liam Cooper, especially in that Birmingham game, was at fault. For, for a couple of different, well, no, more than a few defensive faults. We saw it against Cardiff as well, where, you know, our defensive structure wasn't good enough in that latter period and even in Preston, when Preston would come forward, that needs to drastically improve. Now, the big one I would put on the left, I would take Alioski out. I think it's going to be a horrible game for him if he's up against Matt, if he's up against um, Matty Phillips. I would stick Dallas in there. You know, Dallas has done a really good job against the top player in this division in Jared Bowen. He kept, he kept him completely quiet. And to neutralise this West Bromwich Albion side, you need to keep players like Matty Phillips quiet. So I would stick Dallas on that left-hand side. The only issue is we're not going to have that natural width because he's not a natural left back. So he's not going to be able to open his body up to put the ball into Harrison. So he might have to cut inside and we might be narrowed. Our play might be narrowed. But then that puts the impetus on Calvin Phillips to be able to receive the ball, drive forward, spray the passes. Right hand side, the other side, I'll put Helder Costa. As I've said, him against Gibbs is a key battle. Then in the 10, I would put Roberts. I think Roberts allows us elements of control. When the ball's in, in the middle of the park, he's got a silky touch and we need to start winning that middle of the field a little bit more. And I think he brings in an element of control. Clicking the number eight, Harrison out wide. Bamford up front for me and the reason is that it's because we need help in the set piece structure for me 100% you know they are big big boys you know Ajay, Hagazi, Livermore, uh, Bartley they are big big boys Hal Robson, Carnu so and even Matty Phillips what's Matty Phillips 5'10", 5'11", he can still do a job in that box we seriously need to I mean, we've conceded so many goals from set pieces and I don't know how to rectify that, to be honest, guys. It's as if we just need to score more than the opposition and we need to maintain our focus. You know, you look at some of the goals um, against Birmingham, Cooper losing his man from a set piece, Kiko coming out, making the wrong decision from a set piece. We just need to be focused. We need to be concentrated because it seems when we just go height for height, we're actually all right. We might just get away with it, but it's, it's focus that seems to slip leads in these past sort of 10 days. So that needs to be rectified big time. Bamford, I would use his height defensively and defensively, and we need his hold up play, but we need to make sure like we haven't in the past three or four games, make sure that gap between the midfield 
and uh, the attacker is a lot closer. It's been way too much, way too much. There's been 10, 15 yards sometimes between the midfield and the attack. It's not good enough. It means that we're not joined. We're not joined. We can't make, we can't pass through the lines. It's not good enough. We need that to be closer. And that that's where the midfield needs to step up big time. But listen, as I've said before, it is all about it is all about Leeds. This is all about winning the second balls. It's all about the effort and the endeavour. Can we beat this West Bromwich Albion side? Of course we can. A hundred percent we can beat them. But it is it is totally Leeds to go there and win two 0 But then it's totally Leeds to go there and lose lose two 0 It depends what Leeds United side turns up. I do not think it's going to be a draw. I think it's going to be a goal fest again. I think they're too good going forward, and I think we're too good going forward. So who knows what it's going to be. I, I, I don't want to predict it. I really don't want to predict it. So for the first time, I'm not going to predict it. Um, I do not have a clue. I, it could go one way. It could go the other way. You know, look, you look at last season. We've beaten them 4-0. They've beaten us 4-1 down there and absolutely outplayed us. We absolutely played them at Ellen Road. Can we improve? This will be a massive insinuation of our improvement if we can go there and we can get anything. I would take a point tomorrow. I think you're absolutely in cloud cuckoo land if you wouldn't take a point tomorrow. Um, I think they're going to be right up for it. They're going to sell a lot of tickets. And I think, you know, like last time, it's good. It's, it's first versus second. So I, I'm actually hoping it's a cagey affair because I would take uh, scoreless, a boring, I would take a, a draw 100% in this game, maintain our top position and just leave it at that and move on to our next fixture. I'm praying it's going to be, uh, I'm praying we're going to get the win. That will be absolutely ecstatic, but I just don't want to lose this game. I do not want to lose this game because it's not about essentially finishing top for Leeds United. It's about getting out of this rut and getting confidence built for this team. We showed character the other day, but there are so many facets that we need to improve on for this game against a very, very good West Bromwich Albion side. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, guys. Do you agree? Happy New Year, and I'll see you in a bit.